we are quizzing tomorrow, and today we're going to talk about parametrics to make sure we understand what's going on. Remember, parametrics just means we have an X, a Y, and a time. I told you the times here to try to make it somewhat easy. To find my X's and my Y's, I'm going to plug into this. So 2 times negative 2 would be negative 4. Minus 1 is negative 5. And then just keep going down the line. Negative 3, negative 1, 1. If I plugged in 2, it would be 3. I'm just plugging in those values into my X equation. Then I'm going to take those same values here and plug them into my Y equation. If I'm plugging them into my Y equation, I'm taking negative 2 cubed would be negative 8. And then negative 1, and then 0, and then 1, and then 8. So then we're going to graph them. Negative 5, negative 8, negative 3, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 1, 1. And then 3, 8. Connect those dots. Is that all I need? No. What else do you need? Arrows, because we got to show a direction as to where it's going. Again, the arrow doesn't go on the end because it stopped. I graphed it on this set of parameters here. It is going to end right there, but that is the graph that I need to show in order to get my end equation there. Questions there? We're going to do some whiteboards today, so we're going to continue with what we're doing. For the next problem, take those same two equations and eliminate the parameter t in order to rewrite that equation in rectangular form. You do not have to simplify your answer, but you're writing this. Instead of an x t equation and a y t equation, write it as a single equation with only x and y in it. You can talk with your neighbor if you need to. Go. Let's check here. You could do a lot of different things. A normal person would solve an equation for y, but we can see what's happening here. So if I want to make it a y equals equation, then just leave this. All right, and so what all I need to do here is figure out this equation and get t by itself. So x is equal to 2t minus 1, add 1, divide by 2, divide by 2. That is what t is. t equals this guy, so all I need to do then is take that guy and plug it in, x plus 1, all over 2. I said you don't have to simplify it, so I'm perfectly happy there. Some of you did simplify it and got something like this x plus 1 cubed all over 8, because you can do lots of different things. But it, does that make sense that the graph that we just made in a y, y equals equation is x cubed? Yeah, the plus 1 shifted me left 1. The 8 is stretching me and making some different things happen. But that's the main idea. Questions there? Let's go to problem 3. Write a vector in the form ai plus bj with a magnitude of 25 that has an angle of 70 degrees with the positive x-axis. Break out your calculator. You're going to need it here. Uh, give me a vector. Go. Find ourselves. Let's quickly remind ourselves how we can do this very simply. Okay. We want to write it in this form right here, which is vector form. This is my magnitude. So that is the force. Okay. How could I figure out the X and Y given these angles? Sine and cosine. So it's going to be cosine of 70 and sine of 70. Okay, this is like r and theta. To find x, you do r cosine theta. Okay, or in other words, you take 25 times that. You take 25 times that. So all I need to do in my calculator is take 25 cosine of 70, making sure I'm in degrees, I am. 25 cosine of 70, 8.551. Okay, that's my first number, 8.551. It is. It did ask me to put it in this form, so that would be i. Plus, then I would find my J, so 25 sine of 70. I type it in. I hit enter. 23.492. Make sense what we're doing there? Don't let that be hard. It's not. It's just saying, oh, I got a magnitude and an angle. Multiply it by sine and cosine to get me my values. Good there? All right. Let's look at this one. I'm going to tell you that I'm not the meanest person ever. I'm not putting a static equilibrium question like the ones we've done. Okay, so you don't have to be an expert at that. But I really like this question. And it is not exactly a static equilibrium. It's a little bit different. Okay, here's what I want you to do. Okay, before we get to any of this part. You got three, peop three teams pulling on this rope. Okay, team A is pulling on this rope this direction. It's got this vector. Okay, team B is pulling on your rope this way. It's got this vector. 
your job right now with your neighbor is to figure out what vector C is. They didn't tell me what vector C is, but what they did tell me was that the object, the ring is not moving. Okay, this is static. It's not moving. Use your brain, think about resulting vectors and figure out what is happening, uh, what vector C is. Talk with your neighbor, use your brain, figure it out. Go. Okay. So again, we've got three vectors working together. Okay. All three vectors. What do I do with those three vectors to find the new vector? You would add them up, right? We would take these three things and we would add them up. And what is going to happen when I take this number plus that number plus this number? When I add them all together, what is it going to get me? Zero, because the resulting vectors, it's not moving. So five plus negative six plus a mystery number equals zero. All right, so this is negative one plus the mystery number equals zero. What's my mystery number? One. one, which would make sense that my X value is one based on this picture. Everybody with me to there? I just do the same thing for the Y value, okay? Two plus one plus a mystery number. So then we're doing the same setup. Two plus one plus something is going to be equal to zero. What is the mystery number need to be? Negative three. And those values, again, we got a picture there to help me out, but those should make sense to us in terms of what we're doing. Questions to that point. All right. So we found our missing vector. Using that information, what is the magnitude of C and what direction are they pulling C? Figure out those two things now that we found this new vector try that with your neighbor go i have given i'm giving you a vector this vector right now is like x and y if i'm giving you x and y and i want to know magnitude what am i going to do pythagorean theorem okay it is one squared plus negative three squared one squared is one negative three squared is nine what do i need to do with that number square root it that is going to be my answer whatever the square root of 10 is if you want to go a decimal great Okay, but that's my value. Everybody good to that point? Mm -hmm. Then I want to know in what angle are they pulling C? I'm giving you an X and a Y. How can you go from X and Y and get myself a theta? Tangent. Tangent of theta equals Y over X. So in my calculator, I just need to find the inverse tangent of negative 3. I get negative 71.5 degrees. Does that make sense based on my picture? Yeah. If it didn't, maybe sometimes you got to add 180 degrees to it because it just tells you one quadrant, but we're good there. Negative 71.565. You would be fine if you wanted to give me a positive angle. You add 360 to that. That would be fine as well. Questions on that one? That's a good question. I really like that question. It makes us think a little bit more. Try that next one. We got a box. You've got in someone pushing the box at a 60 degree angle. So someone's on this side pushing at it on a 60 degree angle. That's why the force is going through, and it is moving a distance of five meters. What work is being done on the box by F during this displacement? Figure it out. All right, let's look here. Don't overthink this. Again, I'll give you the work formula tomorrow. I'm fine with that, but remember what's happening here. We've got a force, and we've got AB. AB, again, is the movement. What is the movement vector here? We went five horizontally, so it would be what here? Five for my X and zero for my Y because I didn't move up or down. Now I'm going to find my force vector. My force vector is my force, which was 10 Newtons. And then to find my X and my Y, I'm going to use my angles. Cosine of 60, sine of 60. So I'm multiplying that in here. What is cosine at 60 going to be? That's a half. So this would be five and then... 10 times sine of 60, I don't know what that is. Uh, you could write it as 10 radical 3 over 2. But that's my force vector. Everybody with me so far? Then the goal is to find the dot product. I'm going to multiply those together. Remember how to find dot products? We take the x value and the x value, and we multiply them together. So 5 times 5 gets me 25. And then I'm going to take my y value and my y value, and I'm multiply them together. That's going to get me zero my answer is 25 and that is uh joules here because i'm doing newtons times something that i don't care it is 25 though questions there don't let that be hard it's just those two components multiplied together doing a little dot product stuff there last one just so we don't forget 
find the unit vector. I gave you four multiple choice. Tomorrow you'd actually have to do it, but see if you can remember what a dot product would get us here. Or not a dot product, a unit vector. So if we are doing unit vectors, remember all a unit vector is, it is the vector. Okay, so whatever your x and your y are going to be of your vector, and you just divide it by the magnitude. Okay, the magnitude of v on each one. It's the same thing as what we had before, it's just doing a little bit different here. Okay, so as we set this thing up, this is my vector, negative 4, negative 8. So it's got to be C, because it's got to be the one with negative 4, negative 8. What does that square root of 80 represent? That represents the magnitude. 4 squared plus six, uh, 8 squared. Yeah. So it's 16 plus 64. That's where I'm getting that 80 from. But the top numbers are going to stay the same. It's going to be negative 4. It's going to be negative 80. The only difference is we're going to divide that by square root of 80. Again, the, really the only thing that I didn't cover in that quick review was finding the angle between two vectors. Okay, There's some other things that you want to look at as well, but that's the majority of it. We just did a whole lot of stuff in a pretty short amount of time. Spencer.